I explain in English medium. This is the question. Write a brief account on agents of pollination. To get this question in the examination, you have to write the answer in this way. This is 8 marks question and answer. So, if you write uh, about the pollination by wind, anemophily, all these points, you will get 2 marks. If you write about the pollination by water, all these points, hydrophily, you will get 2 marks. If you write about uh, biotic agents, all these points, you will get 4 marks. In this way, by writing all this description, you will get 8 marks out of Yet. To this question, no need to draw the diagrams. Diagram only is for my explanation part. Now, I start my explanation. Here, what is pollination? What is uh, pollinating agent? Pollination means this is stamen male sex organ. Usually, liberate pollen grains. The liberated pollen grains reach the stigma of pistil. This is called pollination. So, this pollination takes place by the activity of wind, water or animals. So, all these wind, water and animals we can call as pollinating agents. Here, pollinating agents are two types, biotic and abiotic. Biotic means pollination takes place by the activity of animals and abiotic means pollination takes place by the activity of wind or water. In majority of plants, pollination takes place by animals. When we come to the abiotic, majority of plants get pollinated by wind. Now, I explain about the wind pollination. So, here pollination by wind that is called anemophily. Anemophily is most common in grass plants. This is grass. On grass, you can see number of inflorescences. Inflorescence means on one single axis number of small flowers packed together. So, when we take small portion, this is a clear magnifying view. This is inflorescence axis. On this axis, number of small flowers are there. So, when we take one single flower, clearly, this is the magnifying view of one single flower. In these flowers, pollination takes place by wind. That is why no need to attract the insects. Here, these flowers never produce any scent or nectar. These are the petals which are very smaller in size and green in color and above the petals, small ovaries present inside the ovary small ovule is present these are the stamens stamens have lengthy filament due to presence of lengthy filament what happens these stamens come outside of the flower and hang down due to this nature the liberated pollen grains easily blown away by the wind and the pollen grains are very small in size they are light in weight and they are non-sticky due to this nature also the pollen grains blown away by the wind easily and here the stigma is feathery like structure due to this nature the stigma easily can hold the pollen grains. This is grass inflorescence. It is producing number of pollen grains. In anemophily, generally, number of pollen grains become wasted, but due to overproduction of pollen grains, each and every flower of inflorescence is pollinated. Now, I teach you about the hydrophily. Hydrophily means pollination takes place by water. Usually, hydrophily is limited about 30 genera. These plants mostly belong to monocotyledons. In which plants hydrophily is present, I will tell you. In bryophytes, in algae, and in pteridophytes and in some water plants, usually hydrophily is present. Bryophytes. Generally, in rainy season, you can observe some green colored patches on uh, bricks, on rocks, and on wet regions. When you observe small portion with the magnifying lens, the clear view structure is like this. You can observe some small plants with small leaves. These are bryophytes. And algae usually grow in water. Due to overgrowth, uh, what happens? Water color also changes to green in color. And pteridophytes. All these bryophytes and algae and pteridophytes, they won't produce flowers. They are non-flowering plants. Due to absence of flowers, there is no pollination. Directly, fertilization only takes place. Actually, pollination leads to the fertilization. That is why in these plants, due to absence of uh, flowers, there is no pollination. Directly, fertilization takes place in the presence of water. These plants, bryophytes, algae and pteridophytes, these plants produce male and female gametes. For example, this is female gamete. It could not move. But uh, here, these are the male gametes. Male gametes are different shape. This is pear shaped uh, male gamete. This is somewhat uh, spirally coiled and uh, somewhat elongated with two flagella. So, with the help of two flagella, these male gametes usually swim in the water and reach the female gamete. In this way, male gametes reach the female gamete and the uh, fertilization completed, zygote formation takes place. So, bryophytes, algae and pteridophytes without water, there is no fertilization and they could not complete their life cycle. So, hydrophily is very important in bryophytes, algae and pteridophytes. Now, come to the water plant. In water plants, hydrophily is two types, epihydrophily and uh, hypohydrophily. Epihydrophily. Epihydrophily means pollination takes place above the water surface. Here, best example is Valisneria plant. So, this is Valisneria plant.
plant which is growing in water. This is water surface. This is Valsneria plant. In Valsneria, two types of plants are there. This is female plant. Female plant produce only female flowers. This is male plant. Male plants produce only male flowers. So here you can observe this female flower. Due to presence of lengthy stalk, the female flower reach the water surface. This is male inflorescence. On the inflorescence, so many male flowers are present. Gradually, these male flowers detach from the inflorescence and reach the water surface. So what happens? This is the clear view, clear diagram of the male flower. So these are the stamens. These stamens uh, produce pollen grains. The released male flowers reach the water surface and move passively by water currents and reach the female flower. In this way, pollination takes place above the water surface. That is why we can call it as epihydrophily. Now, hypohydrophily means pollination takes place inside the water. Example, Jostera marine grass. This grass here you can see in this diagram. This is the Jostera marine grass. It is growing low level of sea water. So, inside the water only the pollen grains released. All these are pollen grains. This is the clear view of one single pollen grain. This is somewhat ribbon shaped and lengthy. It can easily move passively with the water currents and reach another flower. In this way, inside the water only pollination completed. Usually in hydrophily, flowers are not attractive and don't produce nectar. Now come to the biotic pollinating agents. Here pollination takes place by animals. Which animals participate in pollination? Like insects, bats, squirrels, birds, snakes, lizards, rodents and lemurs. Here out of these animals, which animal is dominating in pollination? Honeybees are dominating ones. In plant kingdom, majority of plants pollinated by honeybees. In what way flowers are pollinated by animals? If any animal visit any flower, what happens? Pollen grains usually stick to their body parts, to their hands, legs, wings or uh, somewhat to their mouth parts. Then what happens if again this animal visit another flower, the pollen grains which are stick to their body parts already, those pollen grains reach the flower. In this way, pollination completed. Flowers which are pollinated by animals usually they are very beautiful colorful and have fragments if the pollination takes place by insects that type of pollination call it as entomophily here different types of insects are there this is honeybee this is beetle this is fly this is ant this is moth this is butterfly this is wasp in this way by all these insects pollination completed the pollination takes place by bats that particular pollination called as chiropterophily the pollination takes place by squirrels that type of pollination called as therophily. If the pollination takes place by birds, the type of particular pollination is known as ornithophily. Usually sunbirds and hummingbirds are very smaller in size. That is why pollination takes place by these two birds. If the pollination takes place by snakes, that particular pollination known as ophiophily. And some animals, lemur. Lemur means one kind of monkey without tail. Tree dwelling rodents means rat-like living organisms usually which live on trees and lizards. By these animals also pollination takes place. Here one interesting relation between a moth and a yucca plant. This is yucca plant. The scientific name of this plant is Amorphopholis. This is a moth. The scientific name of this moth is Tragedacula yucca. Here, what is the relationship between these two? This is the inflorescence. On this inflorescence, number of flowers are present. So this is the clear view of one single flower. Usually, these flowers visited by these moth. When this moth visit the flower, usually the flowers pollinated. After pollination, what happens? This is moth Tragedacula yucca cella. This is flower pistil. Female sex organ. This is the clear view of pistil. This is stigma. This is short style. This is ovary. Inside the ovary, ovules are present and the remain empty space, you can call it as locule. Then what happens? This tragedicular yucca cella make a small pore above the ovary like this. Through this pore, this tragedicular yucca cella lay its eggs into the locule like this. These are the eggs which are laid by the tragedicular yucca cella. After some days, here after fertilization, the ovules developed into seeds. As the seeds are growing, gradually what happens from these eggs, larvae come outside and developed into small insects. Insects means with wings. And these insects come out through this pore and flew away. In this way, by this moth, flowers are pollinated. And by this flower, this moth complete its reproduction. That is why they could not complete their life cycle without each other. If you like this video, please share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.